Hello ladies and uh, gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and we're watching another replay. This is Milan5052 and he's in the Bulldog and as you can see he's got a nice camouflage on it and some wonderful decals. Now I've talked about the Bulldog in the past as one of the weaker uh, vehicles around 6, basically because it doesn't have a lot of armour. It does have really good penetration with the Sabre rounds but they don't really do enough damage to justify having that really weak armor, but it does have at least some speed behind it. But the biggest weakness of the Bulldog, in my opinion, is the fact that it is absolutely massive. We can look right now, look at the size of that T-32 next to him, and look at him. This light tank is huge, and it was one of the reasons that the American Army, or the American you know, ground forces uh, management, or whatever you want to call them, I uh, didn't really like the Bulldog, it was way too big to uh, fulfill its role as a scout tank. So even though it had a decent gun, decent speed, and uh, you know, basically covered all of the ideas that you wanted from a scout tank, it was way too big for what it needed to be. So even though I personally don't think it's a good tank in game, that doesn't mean you can't do well in it. Most tanks, which uh, would be seen to have a uh, a lesser advantage or you know weaker than other tanks it doesn't mean that they're completely useless it just means that either I personally don't like them from my playstyle or that you're going to have a slightly tougher time uh, using them so we're on port uh, Novorossic on the uh, top spawn I suppose you'd call it and uh, we're trying to get to the position that Derpius Kitty got to in his replay with the Leopard, but as you can see, the Bulldog isn't as good at hill climbing, so he does actually get shot there, gets a little bit lucky, doesn't do a lot of damage, but he's using the gun depression and also the uh, ability to be able to get up these small hills quickly to be able to take some shots. So he takes a shot at the Tiger 2, knocks out the cannon breach, which is uh, very useful, especially in realistic. Takes another shot, kills the gunner, and knocks out that Tiger 2, which was in a really terrible uh, place. Trying to fire some 50 cals uh, to try and at least maybe see the T-44, or maybe just put some, uh, put some shots in front of him so maybe he can't see. But the T-44 is the only vehicle, really, which is stopping him move up onto this embankment. But let's see if he can line up the shots, takes it, and doesn't penetrate the front of the T-44, so instead he puts the artillery down. Uh, what you saw at the start of the match is that he actually puts the artillery down uh, straight away uh, to try and hit some people as they're coming, and I think this is a really uh, good idea to do, because the artillery, as you can see, recharges pretty quickly, so... Uh, plonking it down at the start of the match is a good idea. He mucks up his first smoke shell, but he fires the second one, and now we can see the usefulness of the smoke shell, using it to get up this embankment without anybody seeing him, meaning that he can get to that pillbox, which is a beautiful position if you can get to it at the start of the map. Not just because you can hide behind it, but also because you can use it to get up onto this uh, high ground here. Now somebody fires a smoke shell at him, I'm <laughs> I don't think he, sm he fired a smoke shell. Uh, oh no, sorry. Um, before, when he fired that shot randomly, that wasn't a missed shot, that was him getting rid of his saber round, because obviously you can't take the shell out of the uh, thing and put in a, uh, put in a, uh, a smoke shell. So yeah, uh, my bad, it wasn't him mucking up, it was just me misreading the situation. But he has Sabo loaded, and that is a very unfortunate Object 906. A tank which I'm still really unsure on. A really powerful gun, pretty low to the ground, which generally is uh, good in game, but for some reason it doesn't do very well. It might be because of the fact it can get penned by 50 cals. But you can see that T-32 really trying hard uh, to push forward, and then we have the M18 trying to support him. So Milan in this position, which Derpius Kitty uh, took before in his replay, is just going to create some cover, trying to hit some tanks coming out of there, using the forest to the right of him to cover his position from any tanks that may be over there. Unfortunately, the Hellcat gets taken out, and then 
The uh, M46, sorry, I'm making a lot of mistakes here. It wasn't the T32, it was an M46. Uh, the M46 gets taken out, leaving him not really any support, as you can see from the map. There is a few tanks to the, uh, to the small area around the buildings to the right, but that's really about it. He gets a wonderful shot on the RU-251 taking him out, and he's just looking at that corner because that is a very popular corner for the enemies to peek. And now we have a Tiger 2 H who's decided it's much better to sit in the middle of the open and uh, move his gun around, probably looking for targets, gets a beautiful shot in the side, uh, taking out the gun breach and all of the turrets with the saber round, tries to hit the bottom at low glacis to pen, unfortunately doesn't. Maybe he can get a side shot as it goes around the corner, but only hits the track. But that's still good shooting. That Tiger 2 is down a lot of crew. Maybe he'll have to go back to do some crew replenishment, but at least he's definitely going to have to repair. Uh, he is using this uh, great position to hold back the enemy. So even though his, the rest of the team aren't doing well at pushing through, uh, you know, F3, uh, he's able to hold and make sure that no enemies can push through. Now unfortunately in this position, the enemy team has taken C and there seems to be a person on it. So it's either his job to try and take out the guy on C or make sure that no reinforcements come and he's using his binoculars to check all of the paths near C. One thing that is interesting, uh, which is a nice uh, thing to do, is check all of the roads while your allies are going up to them. So instead of just having one gun pointed at it, you can have two. Now we know that the Tiger 2 H was there before. He takes a speculative shot, unfortunately he doesn't hit. But you saw it before with the M46 and the Hellcat. He was trying to help them out as they were pushing around the corner, and now he's trying to help this Bulldog. So not just trying to get the kills, but trying to focus on areas where his team is trying to push. And because he doesn't see anyone, and because that bulldog hasn't been hit, that gives him the go sign. It means he can move forward to try and attack C, try and gain it for his team. He's already got one base capture, which is the capture at uh, B. And as you can see, he's just plowing across the field with this T29, who seems to not even care. Maybe that was another reason why he decided to push forward. But unfortunately, the Bulldog gets taken out. Uh, it actually gets killed by an ME-262. So once again, uh, it wasn't killed by a tank. That Tiger 2 is back, though, as you can see. And he misses with the T-29, but the T-29 is set on fire. T-29, I think, has maybe uh, got a nerf recently just because it seems like uh, it explodes a lot easier once it gets set on fire. So you know, keep those fire extinguishers handy if you're using them. I've blown up quite a lot of them just by setting them on fire. Uh, but we're looking at aircraft coming in. Obviously, being on sea and capturing it makes you target at numero uno when it comes to the planes, but Milan doesn't seem to be too bothered, just making sure that he has enough spacing between him and the T-29. So if somebody does come in, they can only go for one of the targets. Once again, checking the areas where the... Uh, enemy might come out of, making sure that there is nobody coming down these roads. And that's basically the key to Port Novorossiysk, or however you say it. You have to make sure these roads are clear. These are three roads that lead onto sea. If you're able to keep those clear, then you're going to win no matter what side you're on. And now, he's hunting, trying to get that Tiger 2H. The Tiger 2H is down at least two crew we know of, uh, since, you know, uh, Milan was able to hit him. The Bulldog probably didn't hit him on the way past, so he's probably got about three crew. And obviously, he is more bothered about the T-29. Takes a shot, and it hits the top of the Tiger, and uh, doesn't do anything. So a bit uh, careless on the shot, but that's fine, because he gets a shot right into the side, taking out another two crew, meaning that that Tiger only had one left. Therefore, he was down for the count. So after two base captures... Milan is trying to get his third. And as you can see, he's trying to use this little area here to be able to get onto the capture point. Uh, it is something I've seen people try and do before, uh, to no avail, so let's see if he can. Because it is quite a coy position to use, but unfortunately it uh, doesn't really work. I'm guessing if you're in like a locust you might be able to do it. 
uh, just because you can get more than half your tank onto the point, but I'm not exactly sure I'd have to check. But since we're on the point, uh, and capturing it, that means that there's no enemy tanks on the point, so therefore we use the houses in front of us to be able to see the left road, as you can see, uh, you know, from the left. And then we look at the right road as well, which you can see through the ruins of the house. This is a wonderful position if you are attacking at this point. It basically means that you can look at both roads without getting shot. The wonderful use of the third person position here. It also means you can cap at the same time. And it seems like, looking at where his team are, uh, he's pretty much won this battle. Uh, or at least he's done, you know, the work that's needed. He has four uh, ground kills to his name, three base captures, and of course an assist, which is just wonderful. Uh, for me, that's kind of the perfect game. I mean, he could have maybe got seven or eight kills, but he wouldn't have got the three base captures. And for me personally, as somebody who tries to focus on objectives to uh, winning the game, putting pressure on the enemy to try and respond, three base captures is something I really like seeing. So now it's just time to use the superior speed of the Bulldog on this uh, terrain like the roads just to zoom about and get some kills. One of the great things about the Bulldog in itself is on uh, roads it's very similar to uh, some of the other light tanks where it just really enjoys it. I mean it can go nearly 50 kilometers an hour on these roads. And uh, there's a panther. <laughs> now what's he gonna do? The panther itself doesn't turn too well when it comes to its turret but he's realized that he's got dual drive <laughs> so can can Milan get round him and just keep circling him on this road and then an M19 decides to block him what a nice chap but luckily uh, the spawn shield goes off the panther and he's able to hit the gunner <laughs> but the M19 nearly got him killed there uh, which would have been an absolute shame but somebody's capping A somebody got behind them and since it seems Milan is really good at looking at his map, he responds straight away. And the reason why I say that is, as I said before, he was supporting his allies who were trying to push forward. He was looking down all of the roads at the same time. He was trying to attack targets which he knew were there from looking at the map from them getting hit. It's just really good map play, uh, to be quite honest. Responding to what's going on in the map instead of just what's... Uh, what happens in front of you. It's something that we've seen in a lot of these replays from some really wonderful players. Uh, the idea that it's not just what you see from this third person point of view, it's also what you see on the map and how you react to it. Should I defend here? Should I be aggressive here? What should I do? So we know that somebody is around here. The T29 just got taken out uh, by an Arado and it looks like it was a Tiger 2P. So the Tiger 2P gets slammed by another Bulldog, which is lovely to see. And because we are once again capping the zone, that means that there's nobody else around here. But you've got to make sure that there is nobody else. So we get off the cap just to make sure nobody else is here. You never know, right? I mean, it seemed to cap quite quickly. Maybe there was two German tanks instead of just one. So instead, it's better just to get off the cap and then when it gets uh, to zero, maybe you push on it once again uh, to try and capture it. But instead, we're just waiting, making sure that if there is any enemy around here, they can come and cap it. And since the AA and other medium and heavy tanks are on the spawn, I would probably just push forward at this point. But maybe he's waiting for the T95. Isn't that a nice little gesture? He's waiting for the T95 uh, to be able to get on the cap. Maybe he said something in chat, obviously I can't see it in this mode, but isn't that lovely, you know? And of course he pulls him along, my god the T95 is slow, giving him a good boost from this powerful engine on the Bulldog. So we don't just have a good player here, we have a very nice player. And that is a wonderful combination, isn't that great? Just giving him a few more, you know, points, uh, you know, more research, more silver lions, even uh, more spawn points if he gets killed by something like an aircraft in the air. But that, that's just a nice little level of kindness that you don't always see in the game. We've had this uh, overall uh, thing that's been going on on the War Thunder Reddit, or at least did for a few weeks, where people would wait uh, at the start of a battle to try and get everyone on the cap points, so therefore everybody gets some points, and it was a lovely gesture that everyone was trying to do. 
Then it kind of broke down a bit because people didn't want to wait or they wanted to get into positions. But at the end of battles, when you see a T95 and you want to give him a little boost, I mean, why not? <laughs> it's just, it's a really nice thing to do. And now we have a co uh, a Coleon. I've always wondered how you actually say that word. Is it a Coelian or is it Coleon? I'm guessing it's Coelian. But it's basically a panther uh, with an AA guns on the top of it. It's uh, kind of annoying to face, at least uh, especially when you're in a bulldog, since it will be able to pen you from every place. So you have to be a bit worry, uh, worry intensive about it. Uh, it's basically the same for all light tanks when you're facing AA. Generally, AA can actually penetrate you. But it's a, uh, it was a nice match from this, as you can see, four ground captures. I think that's what stands out for me personally in this game. Five ground kills and of course two assists, showing that you can do well in the Bulldog. You can do absolute wonders in the thing, even though I don't see it as an amazing tank, that doesn't mean that you can't do well in it, and I think that's what I want to be the takeaway from this. Uh, just because something is slightly worse than others doesn't mean it's completely useless. Maybe it has a specific playstyle which makes it really good. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.